Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back to another Adobe Live. I'm your host, Fabio Lalera. Today on the stream, we're joined by Swedish illustrator Gustav Ornell Yalmash. I've been practicing that, so I hope I got it right. <laughs> are you pumped for today, Gustav? How are you feeling? I'm super excited. I can't I wait. To yes, I can't wait to see what you have in store for us today. So before we get started, if you missed the previous stream, remember you can always view the replays on Behance or YouTube. So make sure you subscribe to Adobe Live on YouTube so you can catch that. And another quick note, if you're tired of spending too much time creating content, be sure to check out how you can save time by batching your content in the easy to use Adobe Express app hosted by Lucas O'Keefe and Sydney Lanham. Plus, start your day with the Photoshop Creative Challenges hosted by Sam Peterson every weekday at 9 a.m. Pacific. Tune in, challenge yourself with a new prompt each day. It's so much fun. Now, whether you're tuning in from YouTube or Behance today, remember you can drop questions for Gustav in the chat and we'll be sure he gets to them while we're live. So remember to hit subscribe to our Adobe Live channel so you never miss a stream if you're watching from YouTube. All right, Gustav, before we kick off, Let's see who we have in the chat for you today. We have Bliss Art, we have Bruce, we have Carol. Oh my gosh, there are so many people. Enlightened Swami, we have another cle clever devil. We have so many people here for you today, Gustav. So I'm gonna hand it over to you so you can you know, start off by introducing yourself and tell us what we're getting into today. Thank you so much, Fabiola. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be here. I'm so happy uh, to get the chance to be doing this. So my name is uh, Gustav Anel Yalmash. Uh, I think you did a good job with the pronunciation there. Awesome. I tried my best. <laughs> <laughs> of course, yes. Uh, so I'm a Swedish illustrator. Uh, I've been freelancing for around 15 years now. Um, and you can have a look here at my portfolio. I've done editorial work, um, ad work, packaging. Um, I do a bit animation and gift loops as well um so I've much fun work stamps. <laughs> thanks thanks yeah uh, uh i've been real privileged with uh, getting the chance to work with uh, uh, loads of awesome clients uh like uh, facebook and disney and spotify and washington post and adobe so that's really fun uh, and i work digitally mostly in illustrator i do vector-based artworks but i do love to mix it up with a lot of uh, textures and brush strokes and grains to give it uh, a bit of a more sort of handmade crafted feel uh, and i think that's it comes natural for me because before i started art school i everything i did was just handmade uh, mostly pen on paper oh, and the wow. art school yeah so that's like i i didn't know any of the adobe programs or any programs at all up until I was like uh, 20 years old. Oh my gosh, looking at your portfolio, I would think you started on digital <laughs> tools for sure. Yeah, no, not at all. And um, the art school I went to was also very focused on like the physical side of the craft. We got to do like lead uh, lettering. Uh, got it. Play around with lead types and we had a huge screen printing workshop. So like the physical or the, the physical feel uh, is very close to my heart. But you've um, taken it in a whole other direction here, right? Yeah, I mean, I guess working as a commercial illustrator, uh, it's just such such a huge benefit to work digitally. Uh, you know, you can change stuff uh, quickly yeah. and easily and just play around, uh, try different options and different directions. So I think for me, it's like uh, merging the best of the two worlds. Um, yeah, you've definitely figured out exactly how to bring that like texture to something a lot more clean and slick and commercial friendly in terms of working fast, right? Because if you had to yeah. work on paper every time, it would be a lot longer of a process. So what are you showing us today uh, about your process? Yeah, so I'm going to just uh, give you sort of a walk through on how I uh, do these textures. I have various ways and techniques and little tips and tricks of how I go about it. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to do like uh, something akin to this, I would say, uh, if you can see it like, um, yes. 
sort of a just a playful, colorful uh, composition of various objects where I get to show off like the different techniques that I use. So, so cool. I love it. how much texture <laughs> is in this piece and just like also very dynamic. So I'm very excited to see how you're pulling this off in Illustrator. I feel like most people use uh, shading tools and brushes and stuff like that in Photoshop. Um, but obviously there's huge advantages to working in Illustrator when it comes to anything that you want to animate or just scale. So I'm so interested in seeing how you uh, how you do this and I can't wait to see exactly how you're pulling it off. So what are we working on today or where are we starting from? Uh, we'll be starting. I'll, I can just leave my portfolio and head directly over to Illustrator. Um, Here we go. And just make an empty artboard. Uh, I usually start working in RGB because most of the stuff I do uh, ends up on screen. Got it. But of course, if I know from the beginning that uh, I'm going to do something that will be printed, I'm, I might start off in S. Smeek, S-M-Y-K. C-M-Y-K, yeah. Yeah, C-M-Y-K, yeah. <laughs> you were going to say right. it in Swedish? Exactly, yeah. Which, what uh, would it be? Smeek. Okay, interesting. Okay. Smeek. All right, so, yeah. So I'll just have a, an empty artboard and I'll delete all the color swatches except for just white and black. Okay. Because I want to have just white and black for, for later. But apart from that, I usually, you know, I want to make my own color palette from scratch uh, and usually I start with uh, just pasting let's see I don't live he's prepared yes I am prepared so Good. I have like a, <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly I have a sketch here okay so this is usually I start sketching uh, pen on paper like I did when I was like Oh, so this Before is pen, pen on into... paper? Did you scan this in or? Yeah, I scanned this in. Wow, So usually cool. this takes like a, a couple of iterations on the light box. Uh, but I feel usually it's helpful to have a rough layout and with the, like the basic shapes mapped out. Uh -huh. I totally. guess I could, do, I could do that in Photoshop as well. But like I mentioned, I, I do have a, a love for just the... Uh, Oh. I bet it just flows more naturally for you too. Like if that's how the place that you're most comfortable starting, mm -hmm. then why make it more clunky? You know, if, if you like to work this way and it works for you, I'm like, you don't have to start digitally. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to make a layer called sketch. Okay. And then I'm going to usually I'll, I'll just draw this down to maybe 15% opacity or something, or even like 10%. Like that. Okay. and mm -hmm. I'll just lock that to have it on Smart. top and then I do like an art layer for all the stuff and then uh, we can call it solid just okay. uh, and also background so uh, this is my like basic how I start out often and then, and then I might do more layers if need be but I'm super so, interested in seeing how people organize their layers in Illustrator because people can do such different things. But that's the nice thing about Illustrator as well, because if I would have been if if I would have been working in Photoshop, I would have to name like 500 layers probably. Yeah. Uh, but in Illustrator, and, yeah. You, you can group everything instead. So I don't have to. I just have to name like maybe f like four to ten layers. That's how I and you can do it. it in the beginning and then you it's really easy <laughs> yeah. to stay yeah, organized I love that. so i'm just gonna do like um, i'm thinking i'm gonna do this these objects is like a pair of shoes a cup uh, a cup of coffee like um a walkman it's called it's it's funny because in sweden these were called freestyles so they didn't have an, a swedish name but they were called freestyle which they aren't That's called funny. in the English speaking side of the world. So it's very strange. Anyway, so these <laughs> are some. <laughs> like a cultural these... exchange happening on the stream today. I appreciate it. it. That's nice. So I'm, uh, I'm just going to have like a gray uh, okay. background color for this because I'm going to, I'm thinking I'm going to use like a lot of color. So gray might be a soothing base for all of this. And here's one trick that I always do. I make sure to keep this little thing 
uh, global global yes that's very useful why and you'll Can I see ask why? why yeah no, because <laughs> you'll show us when, when it yeah, when the time I, comes okay i will i will use this okay. a lot uh having, so keep on uh, everyone has that. to keep on watching to find out <laughs> yeah I'm, this I've, I've planned this all out with the cliffhangers so no one can leave before um, <laughs> Perfect. anyway i i'll just know this is in the background layer but i'll just drag it into the solid layer because i might want to add stuff like behind these objects and that's what my background layer is for. So now I'm going to mm. just go into the art layer. I'm thinking I'm going to start with a shoe. And then usually when I have a sketch like this, I'll go with the, uh, I think it's called the pen tool, right? Mm -hmm. in, in English. Uh, to So I can be pretty precise when I'm working. Um, and I'll just, with a shoe, it has sort of an organic shape to it. I just need to be thinking about like what what's what are the major sort of shapes here. Uh, yes, and are you that... going to draw like every single outline or um, do you tackle it with shading? Like how do you know which parts of the shoe you want to draw? <laughs> yeah, that's I usually I usually just start with sort of the outer uh okay basic outer shape and you get more and more uh, detailed as you go yeah and i would love i would have loved to be able to say that i just went about this very like with a like doing this with all of the objects sort of but usually i just do maybe if i start with a shoe i'll get stuck with a shoe and just start building it and forget about that i have to make all the other objects as well so that's also a benefit of Illustrator because uh, I can always go back and change and reduce. Uh, maybe the shoe got too detailed because that was was where I started out. So <laughs> then I can just go back and, and throw away a lot of stuff that I did. So I want the shoe anyway to be white and I never use like black and white. I usually go for like a, like a warm white. Nice. Why is that you think? I guess it's because I'm very... I, I always use a reduced color palette, so I don't want I want don't want too many colors, not too many hues, because I want like a graphic contrast. Uh, keeping the global box checked again, uh, and uh, because of that, I think I want like a softer, like the, I, I don't want the brightest tone to be like a hundred percent white, because I want okay. like softer feeling, almost as if it would have been printed on paper, maybe. Mm, that's really even smart. Though it's, yeah, even though it's like maybe it's just showing on screen somewhere, but I still want that feeling. Yeah, because otherwise it's like too perfect white. Yeah, exactly. Same Got with the black. It. I want I want it to feel like it's been printed like on printed in the fifties, you know. Like screen printed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Screen printed on some perfect. old sort of yellowed paper or something like that. yeah some dusty paper that's been sitting mm -hmm. around waiting for the perfect project okay yes now i'm sure. seeing the inspiration and i think it's smart and i'm gonna try it next time avoiding like the the 100 percent white and 100 percent black exactly i like i like that personally but you know <laughs> it depends on what what you're going for but anyway so now i've just got two shapes here and this is sort of the the back shape and this is what goes in front and maybe I can like, okay, I'm going to change this to the gray uh, and maybe duplicate that gray and make it like a bit darker. Okay. All right. I like it. And then that I'm way you, you're like playing just with those different hues without just picking random colors all the time. Yeah, for sure. And Another thing that I usually do, maybe around this point, now I have like the three main shapes of the shoe. So maybe now I'm starting to think that, okay, I have this white color and I have the gray color. Uh, so maybe I want to make like a sort of a, a scale with hues or tones. I don't really know in English what the, uh, the exact difference is, but like scaling from a dark color to my lightest color. Perfect. So my darkest color might be like 
I usually pick a color like in the blue spectrum, okay. um, not too saturated, something like that, maybe. Or so maybe almost it... black, but with like yeah. a blue undertone. Yeah, precisely. And it might be good to like just take this away once in a while so I can see like, okay, what's, what's happening? It? Yeah, because now it's maybe I should even put this to multiply to just not make it lighter than it really is anyway so uh this is another tool that i find very useful if you push w you can just scale in between like this and you get like a and a if gradient. you wow. a gradient yeah but i don't ever use gradients that that aren't grainy so instead of a gradient i can choose a number of steps like one step and then i get as you can see here like uh you get like the individual swatches precisely nice precisely. and then i want uh let's see mm -hmm. i want to expand the appearance of these and then i can add them all uh i love so seeing illustrator them. in swedish <laughs> yeah, it's sorry fun. about that. Uh, I'll <laughs> no, try to fun. sort of, um, you know, uh, translate it as best as I can. Sounds good. I'm sure also if you follow the same uh, steps, you should be able to get to the, the same place in any language. <laughs> exactly. So anyway, now I'm going to start. Like I have these, the shoe is made up of like these three shapes. And I've just, I also use a lot. I don't even know the short, let's see, the, the hotkeys. It's like yeah if you if you command shift nine you bring something to the front and if you push zero you bring it to the back perfect and yeah this i do all the time to just uh make sure everything is sort of layered the way it's supposed to uh and then i at this point maybe i'll hit uh shift d two times and then i get like the draw inside mode Oh, wow. Okay. Shift D two times. Yeah, because wow. if you push uh, Shift and D, you, uh, you you shift between like drawing on top and drawing behind and drawing inside of a shape. And now I want to draw inside of a shape because I want to start... That's so neat. G ...giving this uh, shoe uh, a little bit more... I would definitely just be using clipping masks and then getting all lost in my clipping masks. This is a really handy that. way to do that. I, I do that <laughs> a, a lot too. Yeah. I always get lost with it. I, 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 you know, it, I, I don't think I get lost. I just end up clicking a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where There's I want. Lot. I know where yeah, I'm like... gonna go, but it takes <laughs> it takes a, a bunch of uh, of clicks because you also to, sometimes to you there. like group things uh, in a way you didn't mm -hmm. remember and now you have to yes. undo it you know it's fun it's the fun part of working in illustrator but i still love that it's it's, it's also like I, <laughs> yeah yeah it is and i don't know it's something with the, the ability to always be able to go back and change that has a huge appeal for me Yes, especially uh, compared to analog, like traditional mediums, right? For sure. So now I want to start bringing in some. Some pink. Maybe I'm going to do even do a new group for my, for the more colorful parts of what I'm doing. I feel like you're so organized with your swatches. Usually, you know, I just have like swatches on my canvas that I made and I never mm -hmm. put them into the proper swatches and I'm like you know having to I'm all disorganized while I'm creating and I love seeing when someone is really methodical like this because it just makes so much sense and it's like showing me the light you know <laughs> I go this um, is how you should do it <laughs> I'm happy you feel that way but I guess it's because the swatches they're very uh I don't know they're sort of fundamental I feel for the way I work because yes. I only use a couple of colors so I want to make sure I know you know I have them uh, easily to access yeah, them set. easily because I change them so much you know mm -hmm. uh, and that's if 
I think I already did that, but you know, because they are global, if I this if I down the, the line I feel oh this green wasn't that good, but I've used that green a ton of times for you know different shapes of this shoe or of other objects in this picture. I can just double click it. Usually I go here to NMI because then I can just Ooh, okay, you're like adjusting so, that color. Exactly. And then it changes across all instances where I've used it. So that's very Ooh, nice. I can't wait to see that once we have more elements, but wow, I have not used that obviously because I have just uh put all my colors everywhere and seeing what mm -hmm. happens, but I can definitely <laughs> see how that's extremely handy, especially when you're working on something so elaborate. And with so many la layers, right? Going in and adjusting each one is too much time. Definitely. Much time. Definitely. And I mean, there is also, uh, I'm just, you know, this is also, I'm just fine, sort of fine tuning where I want my vectors to go. Another way to change all the colors, you can just uh, select everything and go to edit, edit colors. Uh, edit drawing maybe or recolor drawing i'm not sure what it's what I think it's it probably says. recolor recolor artwork recolor artwork that sounds familiar yeah and then you get like this yes. as well but i prefer having doing it through there uh, with i've the done it i've done it the other way the recolor artwork way i haven't done it mm -hmm. the global way so oh that's really handy and i the, can't can't wait to use that I want to ask the chat if you have used, um, let us know if you've used the global settings, the global color settings, or the recolor artwork. I'm just curious to see how many of you guys have actually uh, tried it for yourself. It was, a friend, it was a friend of mine who showed me the global colors. For me, it was a really Changed your life. <laughs> it did. It did change. Yeah. It saved me and a ton of time. Yes, and now you're changing lives today on the stream. <laughs> <laughs> I want to pass that on, that <laughs> awesome yeah. sensation that I got. Exactly. Uh, okay, so while you continue working on this shoe, I have an amazing question here from from the chat, from Anna oh, cool. Pears Brack. Oh, Bracky. yeah. Now, I'm not sure how you say it, but I'm doing my best. Um, Hi, Anna. How do you come up with your color palettes, which was also a question I was curious about since I know I've looked at your work and you have such amazing, vibrant colors. That's a good question. I mean, I would love to say that I had some sort of method for this, but I just go with <laughs> my gut feeling. And um, since I use global colors, I can just change it a million times until I think it's perfect. I guess mm. that's how I do it. But okay. usually I like to I like to have like uh, distinct, clearly separated colors, I guess. So I'm just uh, I feel you like know. you also use a lot of like just really vivid colors, right? Like you're not working all in pastel. You have like really high contrast, bright colors, uh, which I think contribute to how how much your work like pops off the screen. Yeah, I, I just, I think it's also because I, I, and I never or never, but I don't usually use outlines. So yeah, you don't. I sort I of haven't seen it. Yeah, so I sort of have to have colors that have uh, a lot of contrast between them. Because right. if I didn't, uh, there then would, you like would... mess up the form. Exactly. So mm. it, it has to be like super they have to be super distinct but and usually also i try to find colors that i can sort of mix together or where i can like use the same shading colors color for uh for the uh the other colors i, I you know uh having like a complementary yeah sorry nice. um... <laughs> no you're doing a lot you're drawing you're talking you're explaining your your whole method to us so no if problem. I would, if I would be uh, talking Swedish, I would make would... myself <laughs> clear without any <laughs> problem whatsoever. Don't even worry about it. I'm here uh -huh. to help you. Uh, we have this question here from Enlightened Swami. So 
the question is like how are you drawing and it's clipping i know you already explained it maybe you can re-explain for anyone who missed it uh uh like uh, clipping masks like how you're drawing within the, the oh shape. yeah yeah i just uh i just push uh shift uh d let's see i can try it now like if i you can see like here is where you see it. now this is now Got this it. means that i'm drawing out in front and then i push shift d and then it's the square pops behind the circle so that means i'm drawing behind Got like uh, okay and then i push it again and then you can see that the square is uh, cut, mm -hmm. cut and you get these sort of dashed lines also so perfect that's so how, that's how that's you're how clipping you... like how you're uh, drawing without having to use the the um clipping mask exactly yeah Perfect. even though i do that as well use clipping masks that is yeah yeah yeah. but this is i feel like contains it a little bit more neat at mm -hmm. least in this phase right i think so too it's at least yeah it's more for me it's more intuitive yeah and if you do like have now i'm going to do another th thing i'm going to shift to the brush uh but okay. i'm going to push alt to just smooth out that uh mm. that's line. another nifty little trick that i use a lot and you're still drawing inside of that shape yeah precisely. Perfect. now i'm going to jump out and now we are back here i don't know if i'm going to like continue to build this because there's uh well, there's more shapes we Sneakers. have a lot I, of shapes we have a lot I of really, shapes in this sketch to be honest i really hate i i really hate drawing sneakers they are so difficult it I is think. so hard sneakers horses and cars and bicycles yeah All bicycles. Really actually hard. i think <laughs> I, I i have like i feel such a satisfaction that i bicycles are now sort of i can draw a bicycle uh, i think is that from, just uh, from scratch from my head but cars wow. horses and sneakers impossible <laughs> still wow, one day bicycles. Like... <laughs> that's a really big accomplishment to be able to draw a bicycle from your head yeah so, isn't it <laughs> i i i do think so i think that that's like when you know you reached a level and i guess maybe sneaker will be the highest level <laughs> i don't know i can't even imagine but it's one the, day hopefully i'll it's like the the shape of the arch of the foot really throws the mm -hmm. perspective for sure but at, at the same time sneakers are super fun because there's so much interesting stuff going on so i'm thinking i'm just gonna normally i would i think i would like do all of the stuff that i've sort of uh have in my sketch here mm -hmm. make all the the shapes all the elements, the easy, right? yeah all the elements the the, the clean shapes um but I'm I'm thinking I'm just to vary this a bit. I'm gonna do a pattern for for this part of the shoe. Oh, cool! Yes. And then I'm, I want I I really love like old um, you know Memphis like uh, postmodern Memphis design patterns. Yes. So, so I'm, cool. I, I'm gonna do something sort of maybe slightly inspired by memphis, memphis inspired yes Perfect. i'm just gonna see if i can draw like a bunch of shapes like and you're, what tool are you using to draw this this is now the pencil tool pencil I tool yeah I had, we just uh, had a question here this one <laughs> we just had a question if you mm -hmm. if you had uh if you had tried using the pencil tool and so there's your answer carol yes <laughs> i love the pencil tool also uh it took me a while to figure out why what what the point of the pencil tool is but i think it's very handy and you if you push enter you can uh, make it super precise or very like smooth oh that's really handy for when your hand's a little shaky my i drink humongous amounts of coffee so my hands are always <laughs> Very shaky. And are you using a mouse or a tablet or what are you using to draw right now? It's a tablet. It's a very small one, actually. Cool. Uh, because okay. even when I'm, I draw by hand, I, I just stick within like a, 
a very small <laughs> a paper. <laughs> y- yes. <laughs> A4 size maximum. That's got it. Okay, cool. I love it. I feel like everyone always on every stream they want to know what tools you're using. So mm-hmm. that's why I always have to ask. There's always somebody who's like, "What? What are you using?" So there you go, guys. He's using a tablet. <laughs> I am, and I, I don't think my way of working. I don't. I wouldn't really need, a, you know, like a Cintiq because mm-hmm. I've, obviously I've been thinking about, like maybe I should get that. And I guess it would be nice in many ways, but I, at the same time, I feel I don't really need it because I just... It's not a know. must, No, but it could be must. nice. Yeah, it, 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 it might be nice. <laughs> so maybe I should do it anyway, just because it being nice, but I don't, I don't feel I need it. Yeah. Anyway, so That's... this might be... Oh, sorry. I like this little pattern. It's very cute. It's like cow print, modern cow print. Yeah, exactly. Which is it's Memphis. A, a Memphis <laughs> cow print. A Memphis That's cow print. That's the best, uh, the best kind. So I'll go to object and pattern and make pattern, and then I get it like this. And now it looks a bit weird. So maybe I'll use this. This is where I, you set the measurements of the okay. bounding box maybe it's called of the pattern Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then i want to do like a half drop repeat which doesn't that means well you can you can see like the way how it's like staggered yeah how the pattern will be repeated and i always like uh to have a uh staggered like staggered Mm -hmm. a staggered uh because it makes the repetition less obvious i like it I love using this pattern maker. I think it's so cool. It feels like magic every time. It does, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. I mean, I I was really into, uh, like I mentioned, we had a screen printing workshop at the uh, art school where I studied. Uh, and you could also print textile patterns. And at that time, I was really into making like these patterns from scratch not, like not right. computer aided but this wow. is easier yeah by yeah, far definitely <laughs> by <laughs> far it is mesmerizing watching these um watching you make these and seeing them like duplicate instantly i feel like i'm in a trance um i think <laughs> it's kind of reminding me of the what's it called the psychologist blobs you yeah roshak yes 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 it's like that but in a trance because it's infinite (laughs) i love sometimes you can also let's see you can go you can change the opacity so sometimes you get lost to like what 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 is the stuff where am i I, where am i what am i drawing Mm -hmm. Uh, and what is illustrating illustrator (laughs) uh drawing for me but okay so maybe like that that looks great i feel like i really can't tell where it starts and stops and then I'm gonna do what I always do. Just You're now inside. I'm inside of okay. this shape again and just doing a square and just filling it up with that pattern. Perfect, because that pattern became a swatch. Yes. I love it. That it's is nicely. so easy. Like it just feels so organized and seamless. Mm-hmm. And hopefully, I think if I uh, double click this, the, the dark color. Because I used that dark color uh, in the pattern swatch. The pattern Got changes. It. Oh, but that is sort of nice. Like a bit more satur- a bit more saturation to it, maybe. Mm-hmm. Okay, like that. So now the pattern has changed as well. Nice. That's so cool. That way you don't have to then like make edits to multiple swatches, mm-hmm. even if the swatch is a pattern. So cool. Yes. Working so, so fast. And now I'm also a bit slower than I usually am because I'm you're trying. Alive. Yes, I'm trying to make sense when I when I tell you guys about this. Okay, and now I'm just I'm just uh, like continuing with the sole of the shoe because I feel like this is the outer shoe, outer mm-hmm. sole, or like the whatever you call it, like that part of the shoe. 
uh, the bottom the bottom it, sole, the, right? the bottom the part, most yeah. bottom one <laughs> <laughs> yes. we're not very technical if there's any shoe people shoemakers in the chat uh let us know i would love to hear the <laughs> the technical terms the technical term for this i'm just but i mean this i do this a lot like just uh tweak the vector yeah. points going back and forth trying to you know find a because like you said, you don't have any lines. So really creating that perfect form becomes really, really critical. Mm, yes, exactly. The forms are critical and the uh, colors are critical. Mm -hmm. This is another way I love. I mean, when this update came to Illustrator, the live corners. Oh my yes. God. Yes. That was also such a huge relief. It feels relief. so good. Yeah, it, it is a relief. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm thinking, I just want to show you guys another other thing, because at this point I might feel tempted to start adding in details, even though I haven't really finished with a basic layout. Uh, so I'm going to show you guys how I do uh, one of the kinds of patterns that I like to play around with. Oh, I'm excited. Because I I feel like every <laughs> illustrator does this where you just get really excited about where you are with the drawing. So mm -hmm. you just want to continue doing it. You don't want to mm -hmm. start over on another shape. You, For sure. You want to just see how this goes. <laughs> For sure. But I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to make a pattern for this the middle part of the sole, I guess. Let's do it. We still don't have any shoemakers in the chat. We well, don't have any shoemakers in the chat, but but maybe I'm we can find out. Now I'm like hoovering over the Photoshop icon here. This is the only time that I venture into Photoshop actually during my illustration okay. process, basically. Except Let's for like see. when I scan the sketches, I clean them up a bit in Photoshop or adjust the contrast and such. But apart from that, it's just... Okay, so now we're venturing into Photoshop. I want to mm -hmm. let you know, Gustav, that the part that you're illustrating for is called the midsole. The midsole, cool. And the part that you were doing before is called the outsole. Ah, the outsole, cool. So I'm going part. for the midsole now. Yes. And I'm gonna, I want to make a uh, texture. So I'm gonna see where I put this. Yeah, I put it here. Here it is. Okay. So this is usually, this is another thing about my process that I like. I, I, I'm on the lookout for just interesting um textures, textures you know in my in so my cool. actual lives yeah, so this is from a playground you know it's a, like a rubber damping rubber material underneath a, a swing yeah, the, or something it's like the floor the yeah the yeah. mat or something yeah so i just if i see something that sort of catches my eye and i think hmm, this might come in handy sometime in some project this sort of texture i'll just snap a photo of it um perfect that's so fun and much more interesting than just like googling for textures <laughs> yeah yeah i uh, also i feel like it's um it's uh more unique exactly because since this is such a big part of the way i work it's it feels better if it's just something that I, that personal. i am during the yeah personal i have a sort of control over the whole process and it's so, also fun. I like to be, I used to be a lot into photography when I was younger. So this is sort of a small way to keep To keep that it up. <laughs> up yeah. That's nice. Mm -hmm. So what did you just open? I'm curious. So this is just, um, this is just a picture I snapped from that playground. And then I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna use, use a threshold ah, okay, layer. Okay. So this is where I sort of can adjust it for a bit so try and decide like how much texture you want precisely okay so maybe i don't want that much texture maybe i just want maybe like this and if i want to even it out like the bottom here is a bit darker than the upper corner mm -hmm. i might uh let's see where i have that one here it is oh I have to Which jump to that. Which tool is that? I'm curious. This is I, the I burn. The I think it's called the burn, burn? tool. Yeah. Got it. Because, so if I if I take away the threshold layer, 
this tool, it just, if you can see, it darkens uh, the image. So oh, if I want to okay. bring bring out more detail where the photo is a bit lighter, mm. I just use that one. To try to, okay, so you're basically uh, sort of editing the photo so that when you do the threshold, it's more even. Exactly. Perfect. That's Precise. really, really cool. So something like that, maybe. And yeah, that looks pretty good. I'll go to image and I'll go to grayscale and mm -hmm. I'll just throw away all my layers and everything that I've done and then go to no bitmap. regrets, no Good regrets map. whatsoever. <laughs> so I go to bitmap and you, yeah, basically I just click OK. Uh, OK, so cool. now this is just Ooh. black and white and I can save it. Uh, I'm so excited to see how this all works together. So I save like... it as a TIFF, uh, TIFF? Okay. TIFF mm -hmm. image. And just, okay. Save, save, save. That's good. Then I go here, and then I go inside again. <laughs> the layer, the <laughs> mid-sole layer. Yes. Uh, and I'll just uh, paste. Paste, okay. Okay. I'll just paste, where did I put it? I put it here. Right there, yeah. This one. Okay. So I get the little icon Proper or a little uh, mm -hmm. thumbnail preview of it. I can just put it there. Nice. And because you're working already inside that shape, it only goes into there. That's really cool. And now the reason why I go to all of this trouble... Uh, <laughs> I like, want to know because I feel like, yeah, <laughs> I need to know what the payoff is here. Not that that was too much work because that was reasonable amount of work. But I feel like right now the magic is about to happen. So, yes, because as I, I I've been talking a lot about my colors and I want to keep control of my colors because I'm super mm -hmm. <laughs> into that, <laughs> keeping that reduced gray scale. You're so, control I, freak? <laughs> I'm kidding. Because I am. A manic control freak. That's for that's your the colors. Way it is. Yeah. Yes, for my colors. Your colors. Uh, for my colors, but uh, because I don't want to use like um, you know playing around with opacity or multiply or overlay. You know, for those uh, who are familiar with Photoshop, yeah. we have the same stuff here. Mm -hmm. So I could like making a texture. I could also like just okay maybe. I'll just put multiply and change the opacity for a bit. Right. But I don't want to do that. Okay. You're a purist. <laughs> yes, I'm a purist. So I want to be able to just click a swatch and then the pattern will get Adapt. that the same. And it's the same exact color, color right? Yes. That is That's... so satisfying. Because you're not satisfying. you're not having to like get it kind of close. Or no. do it in Photoshop and then bring it in. Mm -hmm. And then you can't edit it if you decide to edit it. So this is so smart. And I am so excited to try this out myself. In the chat, I'm, let us know if you've tried this before, if you've done this before. I definitely haven't, but this is so cool. So, I mean, now this isn't vector art anymore because this is a pixeled image. Yeah. But it's sort of somewhat akin to vector art in in the sense that it's it's super like it's just it's just the one tone yeah and the and rest can, is transparent so and it's you very can change like the color or. yeah so it's like somewhere in between almost like a yeah exactly it's somewhere in between and of course i could like if i save this tiff image in a high resolution it would be smoother right as well right, so right. i'll i'll still uh, one of the benefits, of course, with vector art is it is that it's infinitely scalable. So mm -hmm. this sort of puts a little dent in that uh, yeah, perfect scala scalability. Yeah, it mm -hmm. limits me a bit. But at the same time, I feel this is also sort of a part of how my artworks look, like having this yeah. quality. So I'm not you, super... You feel like it's a good trade-off, right? Because you gain texture... Mm -hmm. For the cost of maybe not making it a billboard, but it still can be made pretty big, probably. Yeah, and, and I mean, it could maybe be made a billboard because probably people wouldn't be standing like one foot away close. from the billboard. Uh, so I think 
the relationship between like detail and or like pixelation scale. is still yeah. yeah scale is still it's still okay i love that that is so cool and do you usually like uh use really high res photos or because you work usually for like screens do you feel like you can get away with a lot in terms of uh, resolution i have I, I usually use photos that i snap with my uh with my uh, iphone mm -hmm. and i have a really old iphone so it's not like super it's not okay. like super you're not, high you're res not doing 4k uh no i'm not <laughs> doing 4k but uh it's also like because you you don't need that much re resolution anyway because you throw away almost all of the you know you reduce it to just black and white and yeah uh i'm, I'm sort of it's not the super detail i'm after i'm it's more the overall feel and look of the pattern that i'm after so right it's pretty I abstracted the way you use it yeah for sure for sure uh i'm gonna do another texturing thing that's really <laughs> this is I feel sometimes like I'm I'm a madman for <laughs> just, just trying to figure out ways to get more texture. <laughs> but I could do it in Photoshop instead. Like, dude, just do it in Photoshop. It would be super easy. But I'm like, no, I'm not gonna. I I just want to stay comfy in Illustrator. I'm just not gonna. Uh, <laughs> but okay. it, it, but it is because I want to just be able to. I don't want to pass a point in Illustrator where I'll take it into Photoshop and then. If I edit it in Illustrator, I'll have to do everything in everything Photoshop. Breaks. But yes, yeah. everything breaks. No, I don't want that to happen because I always want to be able to go back and forth and just. So I feel like a sculptor sometimes, like kneading what I'm doing, like into the proper shape. So do you that's ever, why I just... do you ever embed Photoshop files into Illustrator? Because then the Photoshop's file stays editable. But mm. then you have your main Illustrator file. Yeah, I guess I could do that, but I don't know why you would. You can no. use the TIFF. This, I mean, that's the thing. There's like a million different ways to do everything in the Adobe apps. So you Definitely. really have to find the one that works for you. Yeah. But you know, there's always there's like a million ways to do everything. It's something that I always keep in mind when we're doing these streams, and I love seeing how people adapt. Like you said, like you want to keep mm -hmm. everything Illustrator focused. That's how you like to work, and you've definitely figured it out. <laughs> I guess I like also the way it's sort of low tech in a way using these TIFF files. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because and... you do strip it down to the the essence of the photo. Yeah, exactly. And it sort of yeah, I guess it reminds me a bit of screen printing and stuff like that. And even though, I mean, the the stuff I do, they don't they don't look as like screen prints, but mm -hmm. I like to have some of that. I don't know, some of that, that qualities. Element. Yeah. Yeah. I I get it. I definitely see what you're doing here. And I think like uh you could go into Photoshop, but then you do lose like if you have to scale it or something, mm -hmm. then you would really be having to start from scratch if something changed. Yeah. Precisely. So, so it's I guess that's why. But anyway, I another thing that I wanted I, I mean I used I can show this technique, like using the TIFF files. Yeah. I wanted to make like a grainy gradients also. And I used mm -hmm. the same technique to make them. I actually have like an example here, just in my okay. CC library. This is also a, a TIFF file. So interesting. Somebody just oh. asked if you use library. So there's your answer, yeah. Bruce. Yeah, I put them, I put this, the stuff that I use a lot, I put in the library. So library. smart. Because then you are able to use like those uh, textures that are uniquely yours mm -hmm. in every single one of your pieces and it keeps it really consistent. Yeah, I can just drag and drop it. It's really nice. smooth. I like that. So this is the way I went about it before. I did like a, a TIFF file exactly like the same way i used with this pattern but mm -hmm. instead i just had like some a, a spray texture but and i sometimes i still use these for like shading if i want yeah this grainy uh quality to my shading i but like then... it i feel like it's a lot um 
because you could some people use a gradient but then you don't have the texture exactly and i really want that grain <laughs> yeah exactly. Uh, so this is one way to do that but there is a limitation to this because i mean if you do if you have a composition with like a huge variety i mean mm -hmm. sometimes maybe you want a huge gradient uh, right. to cover like a big portion of the image mm -hmm. say i want to shade this uh this sort of bust. what what's yeah this bust marble bust mm -hmm. so um if i use this shape this tiff file then that i would it would be like 10 times bigger than than that grain than that grain there so this grain would be like much bigger than this grain so that's yeah, a bit yeah, yeah. the density um, starts to become the density issue. yes so i did actually did like a a diff some like a big one a small mm. one but all the same it was a bit um i ran into problems just trying to get them to be similar to be yes. consistent yes so i started to think of a way like how can i do that and without running into that problem because right. i really wanted i really liked using these uh grainy tiff files yeah yes the tiff files but actually I, I i managed to figure out a way to do it uh using the built-in uh effects that are in illustrator Ooh, okay tell us so, yes so now i'm gonna do like just the normal gradient like this okay and that's radio also, mm -hmm. let's see i want Use, it to be just using your colors black and white and yeah and this is why i kept why i saved the 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 100 percent white and the 100 percent black <laughs> it's, for it's this. all coming together you guys mm -hmm. <laughs> so then i have a gradient okay and i mean mo mo you could argue that i could use this gradient if i wanted to use this for shading i mean i could have uh you know i could have just sort of I don't know if I wanted to shade this part, part here. I could just move Use it gradients, here. Yeah. Uh, you know, multiply it, set an opacity that works, and just use that. Use mm -hmm. that. But then there aren't it's grain. Too smooth. It's too smooth for me. I really, I don't know why this is, but I really like that uh, grain equality. So to get to the to get that i'm gonna so you are not satisfied you found a different way to do it i like this i mean uh, it's not that i <laughs> it's not that i you know there's a, there are tons of illustrators using like super smooth gradients yeah. and that can be so awesome it's just not my way of doing it so i i do appreciate when other people excel at it uh and they can make stunning artwork but it's just not you know it's not the way I want yeah it, it wasn't hitting like look. your vision yeah exactly so then i i'll go to the effect gallery okay and because i was like at some point or another i was browsing around like oh effect gallery what, what's this and then so i realized that uh, illustrator has also like pixel based effects okay perfect I feel like so we're getting the, there yeah <laughs> so you have them here you can use a yeah. lot Diff there are different ways but there had this this grainy effect that you know that was it it was it was for it. you yes but so you apply it. Okay. <laughs> yeah but the problem is it's still I, I like i can't use this um without at this point i can't use it um the way i want because i want like the, the shading part of the whole thing i want to be able to change that you know i want it to right. be the exact you that i that you wanted want. to be yes yes so because of that i'll have to like make another shape i can even oh yeah i'll just like draw a circle behind this grain like make okay, it okay i see it I, i'm like oh. so right now you put another circle behind that circle am i right yes okay. only the problem is this happens to me a lot i forgot that i'm actually inside of this shape <laughs> that's where we it, have that. a lot of shapes happening guys it's yeah. bound to happen 
all right there it is this is another okay. thing i use a lot like copy and copy into place mm -hmm. a paste into place like putting it at the same exact, uh, exact spot. spot yeah so i think that's the... shift command v for anyone wondering exactly that sounds that sounds right i don't even <laughs> i just my fingers just uh, flop around on the keyboard <laughs> doing stuff but i think that's it anyway i had so now i have this uh the shading hue that i the shading color that i want and i just put it behind the, this little thing that I've just created, and then mm -hmm. I'll go to, let's see. Uh, oh no, here it is. It's uh, if you use this like the where you find the opacity and the blending mode. That's okay. where you find. Uh, make opacity mask. Okay, make opacity mask. Oh wow. So the grainy gradient shape is now working as an opacity mask for the just the round shape that i did underneath it meaning the whites in the opacity mask lets like the color screen. through yeah. yeah but the blacks just get transparent so, so this smart is... i feel like whenever you discovered this it must have been such an exciting day <laughs> <laughs> right you were like for at sure your computer you're like <laughs> so now I love it. finally i can do the grainy shading thing and does it scale the way you want yes it does scale so so it because... stays like the same grain no matter how big you make it yes it does. that's amazing that's the, that's the beauty of it so that's why just, you, know, you need to do this just, process i can just do it like this and then wow it, uh, the grain the size of the grain is still the same that's super cool i feel like yeah that really is gonna help you know make sure that all the grain is consistent versus yes. just like Precisely. maybe consistent you know because you can eyeball it but you know in your heart it's not did, maybe the same <laughs> did i say that i'm somewhat uh, something of a control freak uh, i think i might have labeled you that earlier i, I can <laughs> and now <laughs> now i can even <clears throat> now i can even go in and edit the actual uh mask mm. so if i want like the the if i want it to be like a little more harsh harsher exactly i can just fix that right here or make it lighter oh that's so lighter, cool yeah. so that's not nice and this is for sure uh oh i just have to uh, remember like now i'm stuck in opacity mask mode mm -hmm. right so it, uh, that, so I can for sure I can edit uh, this mask, but if, say I want to like export this, uh, then it will look like this. So uh, if I want to save a preview of it, that's because that's because I'm into I'm in opacity mask mode. So I'll just Got have it. to click okay. click back into the like the normal world, not the upside down world of uh, <laughs> Illustrator. Of Got yeah, it. of opacity masks. Um, and wow, another neat, that's so neat handy. Thing is, it is very handy. I um, uh, I really, I really like these. Just these <laughs> simple shapes, really. I mean, you can. This is just. I use this so much. You know, I just. Do, I have it. I have like a a, a D, like sort of the um, the, yeah, basically just this one tucked inside of my CC library as well. And I just drag and drop it all the time. Say I want to make a shade, 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 sorry, a shade here. Mm -hmm. I can just use the same, this one. Now it doesn't look very nice, but you know, I can just tone it down. Right. It, just and I can it. Uh, just, because this doesn't change the quality so of the cool. grain. It just, the grain is still the same size so right it almost becomes like a, a fully vector grain that you can use mm -hmm. you that is so cool and i feel like i was gonna ask you like do you keep do you copy and paste it but you just grab it from the library now yeah that's even smarter because i was like oh i thought maybe you kept one like on the side that you would drag in every time mm -hmm. you need but I should have known better because you have a very methodical system going on here. <laughs> <laughs> somewhat, at least. Somewhat, it is. Yeah. It For feels the things very I use methodical. a lot, I do it. Mm. 
yeah yeah i guess i mean it makes the workflow a bit smoother um and another other great thing is like this now this grain is pretty uh you know compared Pixely. you can compare this yeah this like the quality of the tiff file yeah it's like uh the 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 pixels here are a lot sm smaller, smaller than the yeah. grainy pixels mm -hmm. but since this is illustrator i can fix that because i can go to like uh to, mm, i don't know what this is what called is in it english called? <laughs> <laughs> but it's yeah it's it's uh, you find it uh, under the effect menu and it's like uh settings for distort and transform no i'm sorry uh, i'm trying to i'm trying to figure oh, yeah. out the word <laughs> Uh, let me see. It's the third one from the top. The <laughs> third one face. from the top. If anyone in the chat knows what that one is, let us know. Um, okay. Anyway, uh, it's. I mean, if you have a, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the the name, even though I don't know it in English, but uh, so I can change the resolution of these effects. So if oh, I, this okay. is like a seventy-two. Mm, ppi and this is 150 so i can just change that and then you see the grain turns you see from there oh wow yeah it got like a lot smoother yeah so i can uh, you know i can go there and just i can also change it for because this is not for printing reasons it's just for the aesthetics of it so i can just type in maybe maybe i want something in between 72 and 150 i can type in uh, 100 instead well that's so nice i think somebody in the chat said it's the document raster setting maybe yes that so... sounds that sounds yeah that's the well, one thank that's you one. uh oh, rb thank you for document raster setting super appreciate it mm -hmm. that is so cool gustav i'm like in shock that you really thought it all the way through from like <laughs> how to work it into the document itself the file and you know how to export it in the perfect way yeah it's i don't know it's i mean it's the first time i did it it was really like best day you know, ever <laughs> yeah but also <laughs> like what am i doing this is is this even a legit way uh right, to right. illustrator like or what am i doing yeah, yeah. But I, uh, I, I really like the way, you know, the way it looks. And but you've been using it for it a edits. while now too, yeah, right? I have. I have, but I used, I, I mean, I went from actually having like vectorized grains. Yeah. That were super heavy. Yeah. Because there were so many vector points to make it look right. Yeah. I mean, actually, I can I can uh, show you in my portfolio uh, because it still has sort of the same aesthetic as what I'm doing now, but the technique was was different. Uh, yes, this project here. So these were like different uh, like food items. Okay. Uh, for a client in Sweden. Can you zoom in a little so we can see the texture that you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Does it show okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, this, these textures were all uh, vectorized. Got it. Okay. So each so, one of those were vector points and, yes. and everything. everything. Yeah, that's very similar is... on the corn. It's kind of similar to what you're doing today. Yes, it is. But these were they so heavy to work on. Yeah. So like when I when they were nearly finished and I got like, oh, but can you change the, I don't know, the placement of this leaf here on the pear? I would like click the arrow button and, and the computer had to like think for yeah. far too long before anything happened. So that's uh, why I like, yeah. I like, I really like the, the way it looks, but I need to, I need to have a Make it a little lighter. Way yeah make it lighter and that's like the tiff files are pretty lightweight mm -hmm. and these uh raster effects in illustrator are i mean compared to actual having like 
this much detail in vector points, they're also pretty lightweight. Yeah, that's really smart too, because um, sometimes, you know, even though it's possible, like you were doing it before to work in vector, it's just mm -hmm. not convenient when you're adding so many le levels of, of shading and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really smart that you figured out this way that kind of worked better for your for your uh, workflow. And I think it, yeah. it also works like it does. I know what you mean, like the Illustrator files get too big and then they become clunky to work with yeah. if you're not careful or if you have too many artboards or, you know, yeah, just they, depending they on how clunky. you do it. Yeah. So this is a really cool way to kind of work around that, but still get the same effect. Precisely. Because I really liked, like, I, I, I didn't want to let it go. Right. <laughs> That's and you didn't want to go look. to Photoshop because of you <laughs> no, losing too many other things. <laughs> yes. Precisely. I, I mean, like I loved, I, used, I used it like way back in the day, I was only in Photoshop and I was like scared uh, of Illustrator because I yeah. thought Illustrator was so, uh, sort of felt uh, a lot more technical, I guess, than Photoshop. Yeah. And Photoshop for me felt super intuitive. But at some point I needed to start working Things in, uh, yeah, I think, I used I, I used, used to work with uh, some friends of mine that were uh, running a animation studio, and I did uh, you know like background designs and character designs for them, and then it became uh, very convenient for them <laughs> that I uh, got into Illustrator. Illustrator. Yeah, and yeah, from there I, think... I guess just kept on, I just kept going sort of with, with with that. Yeah, I think it's really key when you start thinking about animation. Just mm -hmm. Illustrator pairs so nicely with things like After Effects and Premiere Pro and all of that, that it becomes yeah. really essential to use Illustrator. So to have, for you to have found a way to include, to keep that texture and still be in Illustrator files that become real, like more simple to animate is really, really smart. And hopefully anyone here who's been, uh, I mean, if you're tuning in, you're watching Gustav, he's showing us how to, um, add textures in Adobe Illustrator, you're here for this, but you're here for this because it's also going to make a lot of your workflow easier, especially if you're interested in animation. And you have a ton of animation work in your portfolio I have. too. I do. Uh, 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 I do have to though. When I when I animate pieces, I have to like scale away these textures though. Uh, yeah. And then add them in uh, maybe to a lesser extent though in uh, After Effects, because, yeah, more carefully. And when I'm in Illustrator and doing something that's not going to be animated, I just, I'll just throw layer it in. Layer it on, layer yes. after layer and layer, yes. yes. But, <laughs> but with animation, I have to be a bit more careful not to overload it and make it yeah. super complicated to animate. So, but it still feels nice to like Illustrator is still my, you know, I have everything there so I can just, and you keep it super and... editable too, the way that you're working with the yeah. global colors. Um, it makes so much sense. This is a little reminder for everyone. If you're just joining us here with Gustav, uh, remember you can drop questions in the chat. Bring us your questions. Gustav will answer them. And remember, if you miss anything while we're here chatting, you can always catch the replays even when we're offline on YouTube or Behance. So be sure to hit subscribe on our new Adobe Live YouTube channel so you don't miss the replays. Um, but yeah, you can always catch it again if you miss something that Gustav goes over. Don't worry, you can watch it again. But in the meantime, bring us your questions so you get some custom uh, feedback here. Okay, Gustav, what's next? I feel like you've just... already blown everyone's mind. You've blown my <laughs> mind. But I'm just like, what else could what else could Gustav show us in the next hour? Well, I'm just at this point. I think I'm just you know. Uh, usually, I just throw stuff in there. I might, I, you know, I have a, uh, on my hard drive, I have a folder with a lot of different textures that I've, you know, made and, and just keep there. And I just browse through them and see like, what, what sort of textures do I want here? That's like fine. maybe for this pattern, I want something uh, to sort of mess it up a bit. Mm -hmm. So I can just, I have some of, some of them here in the library and I can just throw it Drop over there in. and maybe, you know, give it more sort of the sense that it's a bit worn maybe like this so lovely or uh, it's a really uh, like fun way to um, play with texture to just drop it in and see like how it fits and play with the scale yeah. as opposed to being like perfect with it 
exactly i love that just the sort of uh, yeah i i don't have like a super uh like a super clear vision before i start i usually go about it like just trying out like for example like maybe i want to add some more light here mm -hmm. yeah so i'll just throw in another grain grainy <laughs> shape there to sort of make the uh where where your heel would be placed yeah. more uh visible and maybe like oh maybe here i need uh to, to have some shading mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. uh like like so or maybe put it just to create sort of volume definition and, vol and yeah. definition yes sort of play with the light but still i i don't know there's something with the, like still keeping a graphic quality to it that i really like but at the same time just being able to uh play with the sort of the the textures yeah and the, the texture form. and the, the form and sort of have graphic more graphic elements next to elements that i've worked a bit more to give like depth and definition and just to have that uh mix i guess is something that i yeah enjoy. i think it's it's really cool to have like the contrast of the super graphic style with the texture right because like yeah. that texture does add a really interesting element of contrast to like our eye as we infer yeah. the image as Oops. opposed to yeah, if it was yeah. all flat, right? It would be it would yeah. be different. Let's see. So yeah, I just go by. I, I just sort of. Um, usually, I don't really beforehand know exactly how I want everything to be placed. I sort of just do it explore. a bit, uh, explore it, yeah, and play around with it and see like what works and what doesn't work. So, for example, I like the way. Like adding a shade here, making the shade of the <laughs> shoe uh, just, you know, bleed into the background, sort of. Yeah. For some reason, I really like playing around with that, like using highlights and shadow. To in play that way. with like the background and the foreground. Precisely, precisely. Cool. I have a so, question here from mm -hmm. from Bruce Gonzalez. Uh, what size artboard did Gustav start with again, PPI wise? Sorry, what? So I think it's the size of the artboard, maybe. Oh, yeah. I, <laughs> because it's Illustrator, I, I'm usually pretty sloppy with that. I just sort of maybe maybe I start with like uh, you know what what I find to be like a average sort of size, <laughs> but maybe. 2,500 pixels uh, wide and uh, 2,000 high or something like that. Yeah. If I'm and just, you know, often the client has like specific requirements, like we right. want these uh, assets to be these specific sizes. And then obviously I'll uh, follow that. Yeah. Follow that. Yeah. But if I'm doing like a, something just for myself, maybe I'll start with like the Instagram uh, just uh, 1,080 times. 1080 because I can always right. change like the resolution of the effects and the size what of the resolution, and everything. What resolution do you usually start with when you work yes. for screen? Yeah, so I, uh, I mean, for, for this, in this artboard, I started with 72. Uh, but Oops. then, but then, uh, because I want the raster effects to be a bit like more detailed, I changed yeah. that to 100. It. And then okay. I can change it to uh, even to make them even more detailed. But when I export it, the, the like the end piece will be seventy two PPI. Got it. But but the effects in the document can be higher or lower or. Interesting. So there you go, Bruce. I hope that answers your question. Um, it's very interesting to see how you're working with like different resolutions within a file and exporting them. But I think it makes sense. And it also comes with practice, like practicing how to export depending on the look that you're after. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I guess you get sort of a, a sense of what's... Yeah. But that's all, I guess that's... A, yeah, and I'm, I guess I'm a bit sloppy with that because there's also that security that like i'm an illustrator i can always i'm not as dependent on resolution as in if i would oh, have been in photoshop yeah. or something 
Yeah, because in Photoshop, so. you want to be really careful when you start. Mm -hmm. um, but here you, you can you have some flexibility built in. So that's another convenient factor of, of working with textures with an illustrator. Yeah. So what's now, going on? What are you doing now? I'm like, yeah, now, what is this? You're trying to be casual, what's happening? but I yeah. want to know. <laughs> yeah, I'm making a brush now. It's a um, calligraphic brush, okay. it's called. And this is for making the shoelaces. So Sweet. because shoelaces look the way they do, I, I think it's it's an easy way to do it using a brush, like having this sort of shoelace shape. Yeah. It's almost because like I a could, ribbon. Exactly, because I, I mean, I could trace them, but uh, I could also just have that, you know, be a bit more uh, organic or handmade. Organic, exactly, and just mm -hmm. maybe like Ooh. maybe change the two and a half points. Yeah, like so. So I sort of uh, often I like to work that way, sort of be a bit um in between the controlled and the and and not having control like doing some stuff more like freehand and some yeah. stuff like super controlled with a pen tool right I, also, I think it makes sense because like you're doing the similar thing with the shading and the shapes like the shapes are so uh precise and sharp and then you're adding this texture and the same with this like you know it's freehand but it's still vector so you have a lot of control yeah it's i guess it's just also this i've been working sort of like that now i'm adding like more colors maybe i should brighten it up a bit <laughs> make it make it pop, make uh, it pop but, even, <laughs> but even when i was like a kid i i used the eraser so much when i was drawing i just like <laughs> you know uh, and this is me doing that but without having to use an actual eraser just use you just the, can edit yeah i can just edit it and keep on ed editing it for basically as long as i want and another just doing with the brush brush uh, yeah. tool here that's just like nice. with the pencil tool i can you know choose if i want it smooth or if i want it not so smooth and most often i want it smooth but sometimes i really you know, I really want to play with it. Wanted to show like all the the, the handmade the, feel, the, the, the nervous. Yeah, if I want some sort of a nervous feel, or you know, when I'm doing clouds, yeah. I really like going for the super precise to just you know mm. to, to get sort of a a true like yeah, get all the little details as opposed to having a exactly. perfectly round cloud. Yeah. Now that's, that's an smart. inverted cloud. Now that's, uh, you know, if this would have been like the horizon of an image and these are the clouds, I mm -hmm. would want them to be very detailed rather than just, I mean, this yeah, is also cartoony. a look I could go for, but uh, yeah, I like the the ner ner nervy clouds. <laughs> yeah, using it, using like the handmade feel to go along with the image mm -hmm. makes yeah. sense as opposed to like fighting it. You know, if you need it to look precise, yeah. you can, or if you need it, if you want to convey something with a little more detail, a little bit more roughness, just yeah, let, let yourself sure. do it. That's really a fun way to go about it. So now I'm sort of getting to an, to a stage of the sneaker that is really a bit, uh, I don't know, stressful. <laughs> stressful. That is, yes, this is, this is... <laughs> This is uh, some uh, something that I can really get stuck on. That's like, you know, the shoelaces. So they should go, <laughs> you know, they should cross over like this. How, yeah. But then, then there's, they're also going like in under. So, yeah. So then you'd have uh, to put it below the one shape. Yeah. So, and, and for this, I think, okay, I have to think about how this is going like this and then then there would actually be like, I would have to jump into this shape here to make that shoelace uh, go behind the one on top. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna make it. 
I love I love seeing the thinking here because there is so many layers, <laughs> literally layers that you have to like think this. through. Yeah, and then you know, then this lace would come up here. So then maybe now I'll, I'll shift to above. To the, yeah, uh, not, not using the brush tool anymore, but rather the uh, pen tool. Uh, let's see, and I, but I can still you know I can still even though. I didn't draw that vector by hand. I can still change it to have the same properties as the ones. Yeah. You know, add, I can add a add a brush stroke instead. So I want this to go over and then under. So right, like a real laced up shoe. Yes, and this is a bit tricky. So here, I think I would like use the scissor tool and cut that, cut it off like that. Right. And then copy that piece. Oh. Like so, and then and then jump into this layer that is actually underneath, and just you know, so then that would be like the shaded part of this uh, layer. Okay, I wasn't sure what what you were thinking here, but now yeah, you need that little shading to convey that it went under. Precisely, and I. Smart. I so feel <laughs> like there's it's like mathematical almost. Oh, but now yeah, you're just copy and pasting. Exactly. So now I have this. This lace is already placed uh, in a good way. So I can just drag it uh, to go under the rest of the. You guys, it's very very smart here. So I'm like. So it uh, what gets, what's I... like the most complicated uh, shape or object you've drawn? Would it be a shoe? Because I feel like this does require a lot of like uh, Im imaging, like in your mind, remembering. Yeah, I think actually, I think this is like uh, <laughs> one of the most like the good playing around the shoelaces. That's like the most. It doesn't get that much more complicated yeah. for me. I think maybe if it was like a a ballet slipper, then maybe it would be even more complicated because you have. But like it's more... also yeah. But it's also like some some complicated things you can easily uh, simplify without the viewer, you know, feeling uh, sort of like seeing through it and like, oh, that doesn't right. add up. But like if I want to draw a sneaker and I want the shoelaces to be shoelacy, like in this fashion, like having this, you know, somewhat naturalistic view of it, then mm -hmm. I have to be... I can't like cheat with the shoelaces. I have to do right. them properly. So I I almost have to think like, okay, so this one is going down here, then up here, and then there, and then behind, and then there. Uh, you have to like pretend oh, that you're yeah. lacing it yourself. <laughs> yes. Okay, so it seems to make sense. But I mean then I can just go on forever and like so maybe these shading parts I will group them and then I'll duplicate them and just sort of to give it ah. a bit of shading underneath as well. And I mean, this I could, I can do like, this is where it starts to take time, you know? Right, when I now you have to make those decisions. Yeah, like what level of detail am I going mm -hmm. for here? Uh, because in, also... in a real, uh, you know, right now we're kind of in a two hour, focused mode of work mm -hmm. but in a real piece you have a lot of elements uh on the page and you have to figure out how much detail you can do for all of them right mm -hmm. yeah exactly because you exactly. like to get them to the same level of detail i'm assuming yeah. okay precisely and that's like the the, the that's <laughs> something that i i guess i need to work on a bit like keeping that broader perspective not getting like super intense with my shoelaces because that really happens sometimes. Like I just, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I just, you know, want to yeah. keep. You just want to finish one area perfectly. Yes. Yeah. And I guess I, it has to do feeling. with, yeah. And maybe it has to do with not being like a hundred percent certain that it will look okay in the end. So I have mm -hmm. to sort of try it out. Push it. So yeah. now I, I just, I can just man mention that I uh, expanded the appearance of this, uh, the brush here okay so that's because i want to sort of make them a bit more irregular i guess mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. yeah to have them like flowing through 
through space a little bit yeah more realistically make, make them be a bit more uh, sort of uneven or mm -hmm. another thing that i use a lot is like if i if i have the shoelaces and i want them to be a bit rougher there's mm -hmm. a really nice uh it's called ruffle and i mean that doesn't look super good but <laughs> uh if i change the everything up a bit to make them more oh uh, you know so they get nice. this. Nice. Yeah. Again, adding those little bits of texture where you can, right? Precisely, precisely. And then, you know, this is also very, of course, it's Illustrator. So I can also always go back and like, okay, maybe they turned out too, much. too rough. Yes. Yeah. So maybe I just want them. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it is really nice like to be that. able to like edit infinitely. Yeah. I love that. I mean, it's kind of relaxing, been, right? You can, is, but... you can count on on being able... You don't have to make up your mind right this second. <laughs> Precisely. I guess that's why I, I, I don't get like people that are, you know, painting oil maybe or painting, you know, how they go about not just... Uh, I know. Not being able to around. just swap it. Yeah. Precisely. Yeah, I, I totally feel the same way. I think actually I have heard some oil painters say that because oil takes so long to dry, it's very forgivable for a while. Uh -huh. But uh, I prefer um, being able to recolor <laughs> the artwork. Yeah, yeah I, guess, I guess maybe oil color is a bad example. But, maybe uh, acrylic, right? It dries super fast. You'd have to manually. Yes. Yeah. But still, I know what you mean. I even feel that way just with um, pencil, just erasing because it it's never perfect precisely it uh yeah it freaks me out <laughs> i like this much more just being able to go back and forth so i also i usually i can make i usually make strokes like this as well mm -hmm. to like give uh a bit more definition to right. a certain area area like this part here like the i tongue, wanted to yeah yeah uh, is it called a, a tongue mm-hmm Cool. Yes, I. That's like one of the few parts of the shoe that I made. <laughs> I think I'm going to do another thing, uh, okay. another texture thing that I like because this part, like the back part here, usually that's in like mocha or something. Mm -hmm. Is it called mocha? Like new book, maybe it's called in English. I don't know. Like a you know a, a bit textured skin sort of. Okay. Oh, uh, that's a bit. Um, oh, I don't know. <laughs> what's it called anyway i, have I don't know what it's called mind. but uh i know what you mean that it does usually yeah. have like a separate texture yeah exactly so i'm gonna make it a separate texture heel uh, counter <laughs> i have like the anatomy of a shoe pulled ah, up for us. Awesome. awesome heel counter is the proper uh, let's see heel what, cap what? heel cap there you go so i'm gonna i'm gonna make a little uh, uh scatter brush it's called Ooh, okay. So this is like a very simple form of uh, brush, mm -hmm. but I want like I want there to be little dots here. Okay. Like, but I want the specific uh, quality to them. So to get that quality that I'm after, I'm gonna do a brush, new brush, and I'm gonna take it's called a scatter brush. Scatter brush. So I just have this little thing marked, mm -hmm. and I'm just. You know, Illustrator is just gonna duplicate that. Right. It's like the, the simple version. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the simple version. So now I'm gonna go in, like, put this to. I want this a bit That's smaller, cool. and I want it to be, you know, um, what, what's it called? Like random. Random, yeah, random. Yeah, I want all this to be random, but the way uh, <laughs> the way it is random is up to me, <laughs> like. The, got it the amount like, and, of random <laughs> the amount of randomness got um, it so that's all also like i guess that's that's just how i do things i i sort of invite invite chance but i want to control chance as well like in, in <laughs> when i work i like i want i want to be surprised like oh that looked nice i didn't really plan that but but I don't you want, want to have to be... full editing capabilities. Yeah, I guess just that's... Just in case, yeah. Yeah, just in case. So... That's the root of it. I yeah, think the so root I... of your method. Yeah, I guess that's... I, I, I like I like chance and being, su random. being su surprised by, like, 
a, a certain like effect or a certain certain effect of two different textures that I haven't really planned that, that it would look exactly like that but I'm like oh, that looked really cool but still like yes I agree and Jack Watson in the chat also says that they love a scatter brush so you're not alone yeah. <laughs> scatter brushes are super cool oh yeah so I'm just gonna do what I always do and just jump in there use my scatter brush mm -hmm. so scribble scribble it and then also i want to make sure to i forgot about that i want to hit the tones like the coloring method should be Toner. i think it's called toes okay. to, to, this is in swedish but ah, in english i think it's toes Tone. i guess mm -hmm. because and then i want to apply it on all my brush strokes okay. of that quality so then i can like pick the perfect color yes no problem and no one is surprised that that was like the end idea <laughs> for me i this, love right? it though i think it's so <laughs> cool i'm really excited to try some of these methods myself i feel like um i'm quick to just call it final and figure it out if i have to edit it later mm -hmm. but i like this method where you know that you can edit it at any time yeah because i i guess that's i guess i just wanna you know i know that i'm i'm not gonna be satisfied with I guess it's just chance. I like chance, but I want to like hit the chance button like yeah. a lot of as times. As many times like, as you want. Yeah. Yes, until it looks the way I want. Like, oh, I didn't like it like that, but maybe I I, I do it in a like another way. Um, right. Maybe then I will hit the mark, you know? And I like, think it makes sense go? because if you're using oh. Illustrator, why not be able to, why not work in this way? Because you can yeah i guess so, it's as simple as that and also yeah. you know it happens like i go bananas with my textures and the client says like uh can you just tone the textures down a bit because they're somewhat overwhelming uh. <laughs> it has happened you know and then i'm like yeah sure no problem i'll just you know because you can maybe this was, yeah maybe this yeah. was a bit too much i'll get right. rid of that sure right. no problem it's still editable yeah so but i sort of like you know this doesn't really look like the texture that would actually be on the mm -hmm. uh the heel cap heel cap yep heel cap, we're both but... learning a lot about sneakers <laughs> yes so but you know i still sort of like the way uh it yeah. looked maybe even maybe even just make it huh no it was better like that okay okay never mind <laughs> i'll just stick with uh the way it looked at first um, I love it. It's so it it definitely just has so much like dimension. Yeah, thanks. I I guess that's it's sort of strange, you know, choosing to work in Illustrator, but really working hard to mess everything up a lot. I mean, I think that I there, there's just pro a lot of pros with uh, with working in Illustrator. Yeah, so. I guess I guess another thing I want to do a pattern swatch again for these. Uh, because these are a bit too, you know, uh, I feel they're a bit too strict. Ah, uh, okay. We want to have a little fun with the laces. Yes. What did you just open? Strokes? Mm, I just, now I just made them into, uh, just you know, uh, expand, ex ex expanded the shapes. Got it. Okay. Because I now want to apply a pattern for them. Okay. So um, I'm going to do that. So then I don't want them to be like uh, brush strokes anymore. I get it. I'm down. I'm Because you want to be able to apply that pattern. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So now I'm just going to... And now I want like a sort of a raster. I'm going to see. Like a raster pattern. Like an old school... Uh, I'm curious what you mean. <laughs> uh, you'll you'll see in a while. Okay. So now I have a lot of dots. I'm observing. And then I'll uh, resize them. Okay. Uh, now I just lost the English word, but it's it's like transform. Uh, transform. Yeah, you can transform everything, and you can do it like you know. Uh, oh, randomly. Randomly. So I really like that. That's really okay, cool. Maybe, I've never seen that. Maybe randomly like so. And then I'll go again and use this other effect that I, the roughen effect that I really like. Roughen, okay. 
So maybe now I have something that looks a bit like this, and then mm -hmm. I can just do that and head over to pattern again and okay. make pattern. So now I have like maybe I need a bunch to... of like wonky dots everywhere. <laughs> yes, a, a wonky dot pattern. That yes, it's perfect. Going for uh, so some I guess like that. Yeah. Okay. And then I can just throw away the stuff that I was, um, but I can now, so then I get nice. the. Nice. So now you applied that pattern to that object. Precisely. But nice. it is a bit too big. So I'll go to the transform again, but I'll transform pattern and not transform object. And I'll, okay. I don't want it to be random this time. So I'll unclick the random button. Uh -huh. And just uh, so now you can see it gets a lot Got finer it. down there. It almost so that's looks more like, like a... um, comics, you know, when the comics have the, yeah. the dots, right? Precisely, precisely. Forget like from the word right now, but old yeah. school printing, you know, yes. that's the way. You, you, if you wanted a uh, like a middle tones, so that's what's the way you needed to do. And I yes, mean, you, yes, yes. I guess you still do in printing, but it's so fine these days, so it's not mm -hmm. visible like that. But I really like that aesthetic. So if I want to make shoelaces, also I think it looks a bit like the, you know, the texture, the fabric of a shoelace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the woven. Yeah. Exactly. So I think I'm thinking like this can come in handy later for other stuff as well, but for sure a shoelace, yes, mm -hmm. also. Uh, but then I want it to be the color that you want. That I want. And then I'll, I think, okay, so then I can do, because I don't want these to be transparent though, uh, okay. the, the, background the background for this pattern, because the shoelaces, I want the shoelaces to feel, uh, you know, solid. Yeah. So okay. I, I'll need to add actually, or need, but I'm going to add a background. I can see here, like the width of the bounding box for the mm -hmm. pattern. I can just, uh, I can just punch in those dig digits. And then I right. get a square that fits Perfect snugly square. there. And I just hit the command shift zero to send, send it, back. it back. Yeah. And then I have. All right. So you like and updated the that. pattern. Precisely. Nice. And then for the. Hmm? I really that's like pretty, it. That's pretty nice. Mm -hmm. Or I can also like, okay, I go and I, I, uh, I'll select same fill color. And then I get all of these and then I'll just, but then the pattern originally was a lot bigger. So I'll have to use the uh, eyedropper eye tool yeah. to make them the same size. That's cool though. That's, I love how you're working with pattern, like creating your own texture with the pattern tool is a really smart way to go about this too. Yeah. Because I, I'm, I mean, I use a lot of different ways, but it depends on the look I want. So for some, mm -hmm. uh, effects i'll go with the pattern or so, sometimes i'll just use the like the rough and the rough and edge yeah. effect or something sometimes i use the these raster things uh, and also a cool thing with patterns you know it's like i can if i if i want the shades okay so now they get the same color but of course i can duplicate this one okay and edit can, it. I must yeah, and this this time I'm gonna just do like edit oh, recolor. You know, the yeah. recolor because then I can just swap it there. Right. And then I didn't even actually didn't even need to duplicate it because the moment that I recolored it, uh, Illustrator it, it created it. yeah, it created a new one for me. So I'll just throw that old one away. So then That's I have like two. So cool. I feel like you definitely have this way of thinking where it's like controlled randomness yeah <laughs> right like that is I guess it's that's like thing. yeah it's like uh you want a little bit of texture and richness and and wonkiness right with mm -hmm, the pattern yeah, and then sure. even the pattern of the laces but mm -hmm. still being able to fully edit it and yeah in case at I any did. moment <laughs> yeah. it's really I mean, smart I, it's really smart smart or lunacy i don't know sometimes <laughs> i really don't know controlled but chaos <laughs> control chaos yeah but I, I i guess it's just the way i work i always want to go back and forth forth for example now maybe i i'm feeling like okay but maybe 
like maybe these shouldn't have the brighter tone in the, in there mm. maybe uh instead i should just change this like the the square pattern. background yeah yeah so it looks like this Could to be. give it a, a little a little bit more uh you know shadow um, yeah shadow or you know so it's a lot of i can going. see how you're definitely like playing with the settings mm -hmm. to see if you get the uh the look that you're after yeah and like i can let's see here is also i'm going to show you guys this uh wait i was sure. in the wrong layer if i if i push alt and drag okay. and drop i get this mm -hmm. like uh, if i don't push alt and drag and drop i think i get it i'll get it like Giant. i can't edit yeah. this but if i hold down alt i get it just the way uh like the same way as when i oh, created these swatches okay. so these are different pattern swatches also that i just created yeah yeah so i'm gonna yeah. show you like one interesting thing i think with illustrator is that you can com combine like making patterns with mm -hmm. using uh these bitmap tiff files so for example in this pattern this that pattern is, is actually i'm excited already okay this is actually i can just just so you can see like this is actually uh ink brush strokes like done with a really dry brush that i mm -hmm. stand okay and made like the the same way that i did with the midsole of the mm -hmm. shoe just make a tiff image out of it then i made a pattern of that of that tiff image so Great. then i can just let's see maybe here i'm curious oh that looks so good so that's pretty nice and now yeah. of course if i really wanted it to be blue i can still change it like this because it's a tiff file so then so it smart. just it gets like a sort of this brushed uh yeah yeah just like a brush stroke effect yeah, I, like I a worn a like a worn uh, worn feeling right uh do you usually maybe. make those patterns and then you have them to use for any file or do you keep uh or you keep them in the creative cloud mm -hmm. like that like in the multiple I'm just curious yeah. why why you use that versus like maybe making it a pattern swatch. Uh, like a saving, a like say, yeah. like saving the like and having that like uh, the swatches, the pattern swatches saved as yeah. a, like um, like saving this whole section like with colors and swatches and stuff. Yeah. Uh, I just guess it's just just because. I feel like you have a reason why. That's why I ask. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I don't. I don't oh, actually. Okay, it's okay. just you know, it was. Yeah, I'm making you, <laughs> my viewers, our viewers disappointed now that I'm no, not. No, no one's organized. disappointed. I was just <laughs> no. I was just curious if like maybe something it didn't scale as good or because then you can edit the way that it patterns. Maybe. Yeah, I think, uh, I, I think it doesn't matter why. really. Okay. if i have it because this is you know this is actually a pattern a swatch yeah yeah a swatch so it's just got uh, it yeah and i, I don't even curious. yeah I... <laughs> it still works and it looks really great <laughs> i think it, it was because i want to make a post for insta sometime like wanting to like hey these is, are some of the textures i use ah. and then i collected them all in this way and then i just okay just ship them off to the creative cloud and then i can just got it then you have like yeah they're all together as opposed to having them separate which is kind of handy Pre when you want yeah. to figure out which one to use Pre yeah precisely because i want to try try them out yeah also another thing you know i like to do i can also do if i if i can just copy that same thing and just lay it on top just uh shifting it 90 degrees mm -hmm. and then i get like not another anything. yeah a, a little bit more a, a bit more solid you know mm-hmm mm -hmm. So, so that's so neat. I just play yeah I just play around like that a lot um you have so going... many textures to play around with yeah also I have brush strokes and these I use 
uh, with a little bit more care. Okay. It's the same here. I just collected them, uh -huh. uh, you know, uh, in a document and put that, uh, just copied them over. Uh, are they TIFF files or what? Or... No, these are like uh, proper vector brushes. Ah, okay. I just thought I'd show them as well. But yeah. these are quite heavy. So I use them, you know. Um, sparingly. Sparingly, exactly. You see, I got the... Yeah, maybe we have to save, just to be sure. <laughs> I'm not sure if we have them. Yeah, maybe my computer will explode now. Uh, Sometimes yeah, but you, it happens. Yeah, <laughs> but you see here are like some just different... Yeah, there's so many cool ones in there. You have a lot of different options, like clean and then texture. Yeah, noisy. like for example, this one, I think that brush actually is... Uh, Oh, no, that wasn't very visible because uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys what I mean. Okay, I'm like this watching swatch. Okay. I think this swatch actually is the same texture that I made this brush of. Oh. Like it's the same because this is like I I was drawing on a piece of paper with ink. So when mm -hmm. I scanned it, I used a portion of it to make this brush and a portion of it to make like to this make this swatch, swatch yeah. instead because sometimes you want to be in a little bit more control like for example if you have this brush i can oh. yeah you can have you can be a little bit more precise right yeah so this is this is uh, let's see um i just want maybe like a light gray and then I shift to the brush tool and then I get this mm, and then you can change like the path of it and everything precisely and the width and everything and even I can even go here like to get it to change the you know the sort of the way it renders the it the, mm -hmm. the form so this these brushes even though they're heavy because these are scalable right you know, these are actually wow. these, are, these are vector textures yeah yes so, so they're neat. a bit they're a bit more heavy but sometimes you know you really need to sometimes you need to, it yeah to be a little bit more like and i'm sitting a lot like this like no i want it to be a bit more a, no, a pixel a little, up, please no, yeah <laughs> i'm gonna change this to 0 0.72 instead because then it will snap to right where i want it you know yeah 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 uh, <laughs> and be super uh just i i love that you have so many different ways to add texture we have the but, tip yeah. files you have the gradient mask you have the the custom brushes it's there's a lot happening and then also yeah. your own patterns it's lovely to see I just want to give you a heads up that we have about nine minutes left on the stream. So yeah, all right. just as a little, you know, whatever uh, uh, last minute things you want to show. We got yeah. nine Is minutes. Is there anyone in the chat that has a question like you wanting to see something in particular? Uh... Let's see. Well, we can put that question out, guys. If you guys have any last minute questions, drop them in the chat. We're here with Gustav showing us how to create amazing textures in Illustrator. So bring us your questions for the last nine minutes. Uh -oh. um, but we don't have any pending questions. We've been answering them. And I think everyone's That's taking good. it all in, all the all the amazing textures that you're showing us. Yeah, I'm just, I'm thinking myself, like, uh, what do I usually do, actually, when I, like, yeah, patterns, uh, TIFF files, <laughs> pattern TIFF files, brushes. Do you ever, I have a question for you, do you ever, mm -hmm. because everything is so editable, mm -hmm. do you ever recolor, like, the entire thing? Like, multiple, yeah, sure. like, or recolor like... this entire shoe? Yeah, sure. I'm just curious, sure. because even the textures are editable, and I'm like... Yeah. That opens a whole other world. Usually clients go like, oh, but could you go for this sort of this color scheme instead? And I'm like, yeah, no problem, because it's totally editable. Yeah. You know? but yeah, yeah. Often, if you're working like, in Photoshop, you know... you'd be like, yeah, I'll do it for you. <laughs> but, <laughs> I yeah, hope. But it... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so I do that. Uh, but it sometimes, you know, you the result is it takes 
even though it's editable, it takes a lot of fine tuning to get like, you know, the contrast that I'm after. Yeah. If I change one tone, then usually I need to change all of the tones to keep the right balance. But I do yeah. that a lot. Uh, Fascinating. And I mean, I don't know. Let's see. Yeah. So maybe this should be, yeah, you know, if mm -hmm. I didn't just maybe, but I have, you know, a, a couple of colors that I'm really. I can already feel that you're missing the pink. Yeah, I am missing the pink, <laughs> even though I do like this one. Yeah. Uh, but then, you know, then I have, this doesn't, like, now I have two orange mm -hmm. that are almost the same. It's very similar. That's... Oh, Gustav, that's we have here good. a last-minute question from Bruce mm -hmm. Gonzalez. Um, do you do anything specific when it comes to exporting? I know you showed us before for exporting the um, the mass gradient, but do you, when you export mm -hmm. a piece as a whole, do you do anything uh, in particular there? Not Special? really. It depends. I guess it depends on what what you mm, want, uh, okay. what, what you're gonna use it for, like uh, the size. Yeah. Or the. It comes down to the client if you're working for a client, and then if it's for yeah. yourself, you're just like. Yeah, then it Whatever. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Nothing matters. <laughs> I'm just well, yeah. Sorry, just Bruce. <laughs> Sorry, Bruce. You follow the directions from the client or you don't follow any directions at all. Uh Precisely. yeah. But the, but it is an interesting question. Uh yeah. because also I tend to do this sometimes. Like I have this, I mean, okay. Obviously there are a lot of more stuff here to be drawn. Yeah. But we've kept kept focus on, on the, the shoe on the shoe yes uh, but sometimes i like to like let's see what happens if i scale this up done done bump it just scales and then i yeah. might want to have a look like how does it look when i save it as a jpeg like what's what what uh how mm -hmm. uh, because when after uh, when illustrator renders it like in real time when you when you're working it's not uh it's sort of uh, i think it's uh not showing off all of the details right so sometimes like, you can be unsure if it looks the way you want it to look yeah, in the final ex precisely but when i do it like this if i exactly if say the client wants like oh this is supposed to be 3209 pixels wide <laughs> yeah. then i from time to time i like to export it or just have a look at it like this just to see like how does the texture actually look in the size specified by the client yeah because when i look at it like this i get a lot of more uh detail mm -hmm, mm -hmm. compared to when looking at it then then it's i'd have smart. to like, you know uh it, it shows up uh, that way you can you can catch any problems earlier right yeah, as opposed exactly. to all at the end you know the last hour before it's due uh, yeah. you're not you're <laughs> running into some issues there so exactly exactly for sure all so right. uh that's that's good to just check from time to time that uh, everything looks good lovely <laughs> but, I... yeah no what what were you gonna say is there something else that you want to show us here in the last i mean we no, only have uh Three minutes left here on this yeah, stream. I'm gonna do, yeah, I'm going to do like a TV chef thing now, I thought. Like I prepared this in the oven. Oh, yes, yes, okay. yes. Okay, okay, <laughs> yes. TV chef. Perfect. TV I wasn't chef. sure what you meant. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's Everyone, see. Uh, come uh, if you're if you're listening to us, come back and watch this so you can see what this final uh, artwork. Yeah, here it if is. If we weren't working okay. in only two hours, would, would actually look like. So that's like what it. The final yes. version. Yes. But um and, and the sneaker came to life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's lovely. And what was this piece for again? Uh this was actually uh this is a bit reworked for this mm -hmm. uh specific Stream, occasion, yeah. but it it's uh for um it's actually for uh IKEA. Uh so they were uh, hosting like yeah it was for a vintage shopping event actually hosted by them so that was a lot of fun just doing uh retro vintage stuff yes. uh, which i love so it was great fun 
This is so cool. I feel like we, I can totally see how all the different things that you shared with us today are incorporated in all these different elements, like the texture on the table, the shading on the um, towel and even, or pillow, and mm -hmm. also on the, on the Walkman, the different, the little textures, I can see how that was probably a pattern swatch. Mm -hmm. So it's just really interesting <laughs> to see like yeah. the thinking and, and the, how you actually assembled this. And I feel like everyone on the stream was able to learn. So now if you go look at Gustav's uh, portfolio, which everyone should go take a look at, you can kind of see exactly how he's using this technique and applying it to his work, which is fascinating. Um, and hopefully, hopefully, not even hopefully, I know, will inspire so many people to start playing with textures in Illustrator themselves, because why not? Yeah, it is a lot of fun. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Once again, Gustav, thank you so much for sharing your work with us and teaching us so much about how to add texture to our illustrations using Adobe Illustrator. Today, we learned how to create your own TIFF textures, how to add uh, swatch patterns, and how to use even uh, your own pattern making to create even more infinitely scalable textures. So thank you guys for watching us today. Remember to subscribe to Adobe Live if you haven't already. And now stick around for the Illustrator Creative Challenges with Claddy from Print My Soul, followed by a new episode of Power Prompts with Cody Bear followed by a new episode of What's Next with Anika Agarwal. So for tonight, your homework is to go ahead and follow Gustav on Instagram so you can keep up with all of his work. Remember to subscribe once again to the Adobe Live channel on YouTube so you don't miss our next live. Thanks so much for being with here with us here today. Thank you, Gustav. Thank See you, you guys next me. time. Thank you. Amazing work.